Hello and welcome to the second of our sessions of Return to Brindlewood Bay. This is a continuation of our uh, July series here in October. Last time we started a mystery set in a whaling museum, which uh, comes from Codex Leviathan. And uh, Codex is the gaming magazine that uh, the Gauntlet publishes. Uh, and this, of course, the whole Brindlewood Bay is a game from Gauntlet Publishing. Uh, this series itself is part of the Gauntlet Gaming Community uh, and part of the Gauntlet Calendar. You can find out more about that at gauntlet-rpg.com. So we're going to hold off on some of the bookkeeping that we normally do at the start of session, but we are going to check in on one thing, which is the XP notes, and then we're going to kind of roll into where we are. So uh, each character chooses besides the did the murder maven solve a mystery question, chooses two others that they would like to have as uh, their, their, their additional triggers for XP. Uh, so uh, let's, let's work our way backwards. Patrick, what do you want as your two picks? Uh, let's see. I, I would like to try and share slash force my wisdom on a younger person. Fair Sounds enough. fun. Um, it's, I, I, I still see this as being applicable this time. So I'm going to go with, did you show someone that you still got it? Absolutely. Uh, and then for uh, uh, Bobby, uh, what two do you want? Um, I'm going to go, uh, did you dote on someone? And um, let's do behave like a woman half your age. Okay. And then Rosemary. Um, I will go with uh, secretly remind the authority of a local official. <laughs> well, not so secretly, perhaps. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm just trying to remember what I did last time because I try and vary them from session to session rather than keep doing the same one. Um, did I share a memory of a late family member? Because I always do that and uh, I don't always get experience. Yeah, right. good call. <laughs> uh, uh, Sabine for Violet. You're muted. Unit. I've chosen to be muted, so that, do I get XP? No? Well, um, did you share your wisdom with a young person? Because I like sharing. I don't like to share my wisdom, but maybe sometimes I I will. And I, you. yeah, it, it happens. Like, okay, and mm -hmm, what else? Maybe I will show that I still got it. As okay. Well cause that's uh i've never done that before okay maybe i haven't got it we'll so find out it's possible so we're going to start out uh also uh sabine you may want to check the lines of veils in case there's anything that's different from oh, where we right. were before yeah and in case you want to add anything to that uh and i'll check in after we do uh patrick's scene so iris the last thing you remember is your immense success breaking into this office, having distracted uh, our curator. Uh, I am the most canny. You are. Uh, and then you, everything went black. And when you wake up, uh, you will find yourself in very clearly a small room and it is just dark just pitch black in this room. What do you do? Uh, I, I think she, she sort of like, is, is she, am I sitting, lying down? What's You're laying on? on the floor. Uh, you almost feel like maybe you were dragged here. <sighs> Sit up with a start and sort of look around before I can't see anything and I'm dizzy from sitting up too fast. Mm -hmm. uh, you really, the, the floor is clearly wood you can feel that the the wall is wood, but there's 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 no immediately light. I mean, your 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 night vision has certainly not come back, and you're not seeing a great amount of light in here. But then again, you did say the museum was too dark. 
true. The lighting in here is notably terrible. Um, so uh, uh, I think she would sort of um, crawl over towards the wall, like we're not quite getting to standing up. But maybe once we get to the wall, there's a it's very like very close to the wall. You realize you're in this room is super narrow. Huh. I'm gonna I'm gonna feel around at like you know the normal sort of hand height level. There's got to be either a door or a light switch here, right? You will uh, kind of come along here and realize that the 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 room is maybe three feet wide, and maybe six or seven feet long uh, and uh, you will find there is a door at one end and you kind of feel it it's got that kind of you when you feel it, you feel like that old old doorknob where you can feel like the the, the decoration on it and and such uh, but then you you can kind of feel like there's very clearly a a more modern key lock there not not your standard little keyhole but like you know, a, a real lock. And it's, it try the try the handle. Doesn't it's move. Sort of like pull on the handle and shake on the. Uh, hello, hello. I, I I'm afraid I may have fallen asleep in the museum. Hello. No response. It's very small in here feel around up and, and down towards me. Is there anything else in here? Is it just a blank room? Let's have you make a night move roll. What are you afraid is going to happen here? Um, I'm sort of afraid now that like, I, I'm starting to put together the, the pain I'm imagining in the back of my head yep. and, and things are coming a bit clearer. I, I, I'm afraid I may have made a bunch of noise for someone I don't want to hear me to come and, and respond. I think that, uh, that's fair enough. Let's, let's have you roll. Um, reason maybe? Composure? That yeah, sounds good. I like composure at this point. Okay, that makes sense. Do you, now let me ask you this, do you have an object? We haven't established your cozy items. Do you think that you might have uh, a cozy item on you that would be appropriate for this? Is there anything we could, I mean, because you get a shortened list, you could certainly add something. Maybe I, so I, I just pulled out as a thing to, to bludgeon an NPC over the head with, but I, I did have that like light meter last time. Okay. So maybe it has like a, a light meter and a and a flashlight to like try out different colors of light sort of thing. I like that. Then you may roll this roll with advantage. Okay. Oh geez, wow. Um that's a six and a six and a one is thirteen. Okay, uh, so I think that you will, uh, like the light meter actually will pick up and you'll find that there is a, like it's got a little kind of cork or something in it, but you kind of pull it out and you see that it, there is a like peephole and it looks into that room with the scrimshaws and so you get a little bit of light from that. Uh, and as you kind of do that, you see this flashlight pass. And you see uh, uh, Brewster, the security guard, who like guards a lot of different things around in town. Like he goes in, takes a look around, and then he moves on to the next one. And you can see that he's, he's doing his pass for the evening here. So it looks like he's about to avoid the scrimshaw room because there was a murder in there. Um, oh, and I, I, I 
I've run across Bruce here before. He's he's sort of just a person. He's not like I don't immediately think you would hit me in the back of the head and stuff me in the closet. Probably not. Probably not. He's the the they gave him one bullet kind of Barney Fife uh, security guard. Yeah, he's way too simple for any sort of masterminded conspiracy with peepholes, and secret scrimshaw. Okay, um, then uh, yeah, I, I think she's. Like, we get this shot of just her eye up against the eye hole, sort of looking around frantically. Uh, and then, uh, without thinking that, you know, maybe moving her mouth to the eye hole would make things clearer, she starts sort of shouting and banging on the, the wall there, which I imagine comes through in a very, like, muffled and upsetting way from the Scrimshaw murder room. And he, he, he freaks, you know, the gun comes out. Uh, and then he hears your voice and he kind of moves over and then he he sees uh, sees like a little bit of light from your your light meter thing coming through and he's like oh, how'd you get in the wall <laughs> what was his name again his name is Brewster 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 you open up this door right now you get me out of here I can't believe you left me in here what sort of guard are you do you even watch the sort of criminals that are coming in and out of this place this is a wall, not a door. But don't tell me it's a wall, not a door. Open the door. But where's the door? Well, how would I get in here if there wasn't a door? I don't I don't know where. Is, 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 is there a door in that room you're in? Wait a minute. Is the door on this side? No, no. This is a peephole in. The, the door actually looks like it goes like laterally to this. Well, go obviously to the other side. The door is on the other side. Uh, I think you're in the wall. Don't be slow, boy. Just take your flashlight and go around to the other side and find the door. And he will come back after a few minutes. He's like, I can't find it. Go, go, go look again. And I'll just go over to the door and start pounding on it the whole time. Eventually he comes back and he says, uh, could, I got a skeleton key. Can, can I just pass that to you? Well, I, well, yes. And he'll very carefully take off this key thing and he'll pass it through the peephole to you. I mean, this is not something that I realized earlier in my life, but here recently in the past year or so since joining the club, I have always wanted a skeleton key. Matt Delacourt finds them in like eight different novels and oh my God, they just sound like the coolest thing. They open everything. And and you will go to, to the door and you'll be able to open it and realize that this, this is clearly a set of secret passages in this mansion. Useless nonsense. Young people can't do anything. Give him a flashlight, um, and you'll be able to come out, and and Brewster will 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 say, "Should I call the police?" What what do I come out of? Is there like a secret passage? Oh yeah, you find find a little door that like clicks open and and goes out in another another room. Um, uh, probably comes out in one of the bathrooms. <laughs> Well, yes, call the police. Someone hit me in the back of the head and stuffed me in a closet that doesn't exist. So I'm going to cut from there. And we're going to bring you on scene to the other mavens here in just a moment. Okay, post uh, wrap up. By the way, you may put as a clue uh, a suspicious peephole as a clue uh, on the uh, clue list there. So... Violet, where have you been for the last week or so? I think I wasn't in town. I think it was with my son, whose name I've forgotten. I think the fiance or husband of my son's was Ricardo. I have forgotten the name of my son. I apologize. I should have written it down somewhere. Yeah. Ben Benjamin. Benjamin. Benjamin, right. Yeah, my husband was Barney. Uh, yeah, and I was there because I think maybe their Ricardo broke a leg, right? He uh, where they both work in um, in California. They work in the movie business, and I think Ricardo he's an FX guy, and the shenanigans happened at the set of some 
star force thingy or other and he broke a leg and I w went there to take care of Melissa so that Ricardo could recover and Benjamin could be there for him and Melissa wouldn't be scared because uh, parents breaking legs is always a bit scary for kids. Yeah. Uh, and so I think with the scene that we'll see is uh, it's evening, uh, Bobby and Rose, uh, uh, the plan had been to meet back uh, at the cafe uh, and it's gotten a little late and Iris hasn't shown up. And I don't know Iris, I yeah. think. Uh, uh, I? Iris will be, uh, Iris uh, uh, has been here for the past couple of months. Uh, so okay. you will know Iris, but maybe a little bit tangentially. Okay. Okay. Uh, keep, she's been I at the book mi meetings. I keep missing her. I keep missing her. <laughs> I don't know how this happens, but sometimes you, you hear about people and you think, yeah, I got to meet her next week. But next week is uh, this, this book binding conference and you can't go. And and the next week after that, Iris has to go fishing for something. And you know, you know how that happens, how you always keep missing. So I've kept missing her. Uh, so Bobby, Rose, you're sitting there uh, and Pritja has, has brought you some more coffee. And uh, uh, as you're waiting, you see uh, Violet come walking up the, the steps to that little half level that you have your, your special uh, table at, uh, maybe a little more sun uh, than she would have gotten here in Brindlewood Bay. Um, and Violet, you can tell right away when you look at Bobby and Rose that something is the matter. Um, okay, I'll say hi. Um... How, how have you been? Why, Violet? Oh, so, come on, sit down. Let me buy you a piece of cake. I'm so glad you have arrived. Yeah, thank you. The cake here is so much better than California. I don't know. They can't make cake over there. I think it's the weather. They can make ice cream with everything and off everything, but cake? I don't know. I just Maybe I'm just too old for, for cake. Californian cake. Well... Brace yourself, you're going to need a piece of the uh, pistachio rose for this one. Uh, okay, I'm sitting down here. There has been another murder here in Brindlewood Bay. Another murder right before our very eyes. Oh, wow, another one. That is, um, and it's, I feel like we're in a TV series or something. Something terrible and dark is happening in Brindlewood Bay. And I fear that the same Someone's. people are behind all of it. Like a rose, like a conspiracy. Why? <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, I think I'll have that cake now. And Rose, by and the I'm, way, is and, drinking and, lots of espresso. Okay. <laughs> and I'm looking at Bobby if she's into this. There's a conspiracy uh, thing. Uh, also it does it does seem like some of these incidents are uh coincidentally connected with each other but <clears throat> we try not to use the conspiracy word around here um and she looks over the over that ledge because last time uh someone overheard us talking and it did not go well so um wow so uh, I I seem to have met. Tell me more about this this dark murder. Can we talk about this here? You, sure, sure. The whole town is talking about it. Um, you know the um, uh, the whaling uh, historical museum uh, down the road up on the hill. Yeah, I did restore some of their books a few years back. Yes, that was very generous of you. I don't know how they convinced you to do that. Um, they said, we have books, they are damaged, can you repair them? And I said, oh, yes, sure. Um, We're going to have to talk about your business model one day. Um, but uh, there was a murder in the Scrimshaw room, and it turns out Scrimshaw is carvings on whale bones, which Bobby knew, but I just learned. And um, uh, there was, uh, yes, there was a murder of, no, I don't remember. <laughs> So Edgar Nickerson, a grad student from Boston, was killed with a piece <gasps> of scrimshaw through his neck. Uh, you know, we had our usual kind of like horse de vers and sort of opening scene as like, you know, interacting with different people. Uh, since his death, it has emerged 
uh, let me quickly look at the clues, uh, that he is an ex of Chris Chadder, who was hiding and found hiding in the bathroom, um, that his cousin, Audrey Nickerson, lives around here, uh, dropped out of college. Uh, she was in tears. Uh, and she had a piece of scrim black scrimshaw that he gave her and told her to hide. Uh, and the black scrimshaw is very definitely supernatural. Um, and, you know, mm -hmm. it's warm to the touch and various of the disgusting things that uh, Lowell described about it. Um, okay. and so the, the murder victim is Edgar Nickerson, right? Yes, he is a dead boy. Uh, and Audrey is his cousin and Chris is his boyfriend fiance this is his ex-boyfriend ex-boyfriend uh, oh okay the deputy anderson from our last adventure uh, uh, which went horribly wrong okay um, that's when i wasn't there anyway so okay. yes I, I think you were there in the first session but not the second session so okay. she you did see her i think at the start i'm not sure i can't remember mm -hmm. but anyways okay. she was making uh you know she seemed to be putting a move on edgar nickerson um mm -hmm. and then he died mm -hmm. uh Professor Schwartz is from a rival university or like a, you know, a rival academic thing. I can't remember the name exactly. It um, sounds very small and podunky. Uh, but he's Rhymes very in Throckmorton it. College. Yes, exactly. They're a prestigious liberal arts college. As he will he tell you if you're into that. He yeah, has a fancy hat. <laughs> he does. Uh, can see if I'm looking at the NPCs, so. Oh. And he is very interested in this Black Scrimshaw and mm -hmm. has lied to Rose about how oh. about about it um, oh. although he doesn't appear you know there's nothing conclusive obviously uh and then there is cornelius absalom who is a wealthy philanthropist whose wife uh ex-wife like dead wife i think re passed away wife his he came back for his mother his mother that was it his mother his mother had left a you know in her will was that the museum was among the vets of many causes that he has to continue to patronize which he's mm. very unhappy about, according to us. His mother had a strange tattoo that is found around the Brindlewood Bay, uh, oh. which he is very appalled by. So just to okay. give you some of those kind of big picture okay. clues. Thank um, you. And George Pollard is a broke, cure. is like a, a poor, uh, like the owner of the museum. He appears mm -hmm. to be struggling financially. Had an argument with Edgar Nicholson, I, I think was mm -hmm. mentioned. Um, and I don't know if we'd know much about uh, Catherine Burko, really. Hugely uh, overqualified. Yes, she's, she's too qualified. She's the curator, as I see. Yes. Wow. Oh, and one thing that Rose is, I think, most, uh, you know, and you can see that, like, she trembles as she says, she says this, like, slightly, is um, that Professor Swartz was most... Uh, unsettled as he said that a strange young woman had paid him a visit about black scrimshaw and um was a podcaster of our acquaintance uh, lara sanchez and lara sanchez is the uh the true crimes podcaster that we recruited in our last one who came underneath the um thing and was kind of like a honorary mystery maven for a session uh i did not meet her no, no. I, I think you just saw her in the yeah, okay. and then um, I just saw her in the, in the uh, tab. Yeah, but she's a big, um, you know, in the established mm -hmm. fiction of the mystery mavens. She's yeah. like okay. someone we thought we could trust, kind of thing, because she oh. came down into those caves, into these weird caves with us, and uh, you know, it seemed to be like a mystery maven in the making. Oh, well, I had did miss the whole thing with the weird caves, though. Um, oh yeah, but you, we definitely have told you all about it. And the Which fact is that very we, we... helpful because I, as a player, don't know anything about it. Oh, well, we went underneath the mystery caves and found some weird statues and evidence of cults. And we've tried to go back there since. And somehow we can never quite find the caves. It's almost like they never existed. Oh. And we yes. talk about it all the time. I oh, think okay. Violet's probably sick of Rose and Bobby talking about the caves. Yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, you have dreamed them or something like that. <laughs> Oh, but I'm God. too polite. I'm too polite to say. Now we're in a situation where Bobby and Rose know that there's a conspiracy. <laughs> Violet <laughs> is like, nah. <laughs> hey, well, you come back from California and people start yelling and talking about a conspiracy. Yeah, sure. <laughs> of I think... Yes, yes, Rose. Thank you. Bobby... No, but I'm worried about you. 
Bobby, at that point, you kind of look over because the, the door of the cafe comes open and you will see Iris, who looks a little shaken and she is being kind of led in uh, or kind of uh, uh, right behind her is a Deputy Anderson. And uh, Anderson says, has spent the, the, the last half hour disbelieving you uh, and Iris and uh, uh, said, suspecting that you were just doing some sort of mystery maven hijinks in the uh, museum. Uh, and um, she will kind nonetheless, of- Nonetheless, Iris insisted on like an ambulance and an EMT. So she has like giant bandages wrapped around her head of the sort of like pristine white that they were obviously just put on right off camera and then she walked on. Right. Right, and uh, uh, Anderson will will frog march you up to uh, the uh, stairs to the Mavens, and she says, "Bobby, Rose, oh Violet, you're back in town." Yes, dear, I am back in town. Is is everything okay with Iris? We found her in the museum. Of course things aren't okay. Do I look After, okay? I don't look okay at all. I look terrible. Terrible things have Iris, happened to me. Iris come, Iris, come sit down. Calm down. Calm down. I will leave Iris with you. Uh, Mr. Pollard is not pressing charges. Pressing would charges? He, why would he be pressing charges? What now, I'm you telling think? you, young woman, if you would just sit here and listen, they can help me explain exactly what's going on here with the murders and people and watching she from strange turns rooms and walks back down the stairs, not even listening to you, Iris. Had such hopes for her. I do um, think that perhaps, you know, it occurs to me now that I've been so suspicious of everybody that was involved in the poor death at the bread and breakfast, but Deputy Anderson may not be who we thought she was. She was handed an envelope by the dead woman, not by Miss Carfax. She may just be another Patsy like we were. What? 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 Well, I'd, I'd, I fear that we may have portrayed Deputy Anderson in a rather more negative light than she deserves. Uh, I'm not saying we should trust her. I'm saying that perhaps what Bobby and I have been telling you, Iris, is maybe not the full has not been uh, accurate. Well, that's I not as important. Did you not hear her or, or me? I was attacked, viciously attacked inside the museum. And I, I found a whole for an Irish work of, coffee. I will call for yes. an Irish coffee for Iris. I don't know her, but Irish coffee is always a good idea in situations like these. And Pritchett's so, immediately preparing that. Iris, Iris, this is part of being a maven. Sometimes you find yourself in desperate or situations uh, or precarious situations. The important thing is you are mostly okay, which at our age, that's really good. But what did you learn in the museum? Did you learn anything having broken it? Before we go on, um, I had two conditions the last time we started. They will be stopped. cleared. They will be cleared. Okay, yes. then I will clear them because I don't think I will have a sprained wrist for months. Oh, but no. you know, older people. And I will I, look at Iris then and say, look, I have sprained my wrist with one of our excursions and, and it's still, it's, it's a little touchy. I mean, I can use it again for everything, but also, you know, sometimes it, there's a twing, twinge. No one ever said think, that old age would be easy, dears. And I think Iris is sort of like eyeing back and forth between Violet and Rose with the very unsubtle raised eyebrow of like. Oh, we haven't we, we haven't met formally, did we, Iris? I assume I'm, I'm Violet. Um, I've heard so much about you. I'm uh, Iris. I can't remember hearing anything about you. Oh, why? Well, I beg well. your pardon. <laughs> we talk about our dear friend Violet all the time. Oh, well, I'll go and see about the coffee for Iris. She seems a bit shaken. And I 
go off to help Priya prepare the coffee and explain to her the history of Irish coffee and how to really make it. Yes, I'm a bit I, insulted. I, or, yeah, I'm a bit hurt that Bobby and Rose haven't talked about. We are staring daggers at Iris at this point, I think. Like, <laughs> Iris, being assaulted and waking up in a strange place is no oh. excuse for bad manners. Oh, my head, you shouldn't <laughs> talk so loud. I will talk however I like to someone as rude as you. Huh. Poor Violet. Can we trust Violet, you know, with the whole conspiracy and secrecy? Well, and I don't know. People can trying I trust... to kill me in the museum? Well, it wasn't Violet, I can tell you that. We've been through a lot with Violet. There was the murder of the person uh, getting thrown overboard. There was the murder at the Great British Breaking Show. There was the murder at the other uh, B&B. We've been through so much. Uh, believe me, Violet is good people. Now, and I, I can tell you right now that Violet would not have been caught if she'd broken into some museum. This is, okay, okay, Rose, settle down. Look, look. Why? I will this have has, you know my plan was masterful. This is exactly what they want us to do. They want us bickering amongst each other so we cannot track down the real killer. Now let's, ladies, let's set aside our differences. Iris, what did you learn at the museum? Please tell I'm me. I'm telling you twice, so if you're gonna trust Violet, I'll just wait for her to get back. <laughs> Richie's like, okay, I think I, I think I did it like you said, Violet. <laughs> Very good. That's very yeah. good. You're right. a very good barista, Priya. Thank you. Yeah, well, you know, when I was very young, I waited tables at a I, theater. I do know that, yes. Yes, yes. I've told yes. you before, didn't I? Well, it wasn't the same. It wasn't the same. People were a lot more handsy back then. And you couldn't slap them. I mean, you could, but then they'd be, uh, they'd be angry. Nowadays, you can just slap them and, uh, and throw them out. That, that, that's really better, I think. I have some mace too. Mm. Oh, wow, we were, we did not have that back then. Well, you know, I, I married the guy, one of the guys who got handsy, so maybe I should have known better. <laughs> she, her, she, she's like, clearly now that that puts a whole spin on that. Um, and uh, you can take the coffee and head mm -hmm. back up and, and it's a little quiet when you come back up, like they're, they're waiting for you to return. Yeah, I'm ignoring Rose and Bobby and I'm putting the coffee to Iris and say, here, here Iris, drink that, that will calm your nurse. As we mentioned, that's, that's she's very serious. kind. <laughs> 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 She'll take a sip and sort of, ooh, at how Irish it is. Oh, oh, oh bigger sip. Okay, that's, mm -hmm. all right, so. I cunningly broke into the museum when no one was there so that I could go through all of their files in the office and find some uh, information about the Black Scrimshaw. And my plan was going perfectly until I don't even know what happened. I think someone attacked me. They hit me in the back of the head with something and suddenly everything was black. Awful, it was just awful. But I woke up in a very small room and after masterfully deducing that I was hidden in a secret passageway, I informed the security guard to uh, how to get me out. And, and calmly, after mapping the entire area, I extricated myself from the very dangerous situation. Man, yeah. Did you find anything interesting in the secret room? Well, no. I mean, other than, other than me. Well, there was a, um, a hole. There was a peephole. It looked it looked directly onto where the murder happened. What now? In, very interesting. So somebody might have witnessed the murder from the secret room. And, and even better, I was so upset and crying and confused by my concussion that I never actually managed to give the key back. She holds it up with a little grin. That is a terrible oversight that you should correct at the earliest convenient opportunity. Oh yes, I'm, I'm sure I will I will give it back as soon as I remember. Yeah, as soon as it's convenient. 
Yes. I like her. I inform Bobby Andros. I like her too. So uh, I find an entire secret passage network in an old mansion where a murder happened and we just skip right over that. No one's, I was, uh, I thought I mean, who, who, who hasn't found a network of secret passages somewhere in Brindlewood Bay? Yeah, let's talk just when you find some caves, please. I hadn't found any. This is my first time. Okay. I'm joking. I'm joking. You did, you did really, really well. Next time, though, let us know that you're breaking in so that, you know, you can have backup. But isn't that making you part of the crime somehow culpable or you oh, go to jail are. too? We are all accomplices here. Remember when I broke into the, I think that was when the, uh, the, the cook was murdered, right? When I tried to break up into something and somebody pushed me out of the window. Yeah. Well, out of yeah. Window. It wasn't, it wasn't a very high window. Yeah. Thank God for uh, Violet and Iris taking all the physical hits for the rest. Of us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but maybe we should go and I, I imagine if this was a hidden past you didn't see a lot, maybe we should go and investigate it with a flashlight. And if there is an entire passage, not just a little room, might go somewhere like a cave or something. Oh, uh, yes, maybe we can finally see these mythical caves you two keep talking about. Did we ever figure out there was... Oh, well, they've told you about the caves. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at the list of clues, and there was the handwriting on Edgar's thesis. Did we ever mm. figure out whose handwriting that belonged? To? No, you have not. What was his thesis about? I think that we should go check out the visitors, the uh, the guest book for the museum where you Ooh. signed in. Oh, nice. And compare handwritings. Um, I, I feel that mechanically we're at the number of clues that we need. Again, though, I'm struggling to paint a fictional picture that points at anyone in particular, you know? Yeah, at, at this point, you'd be rolling with a plus zero. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we can get more is what I'm saying, but like, it, I think we should focus on as much as I want to go traipsing through secret passageways and things, I'm like, that's conspiracy stuff, not murder stuff, perhaps. Um, has somebody talked to the, the uh, ex-boyfriend? Uh, yes, uh, we, I spoke to Chris uh, while he was uh, got him away from Deputy Anderson. He said that they hadn't really spoken in some time, and uh, he came here when he found out that Edgar was visiting without telling him. Mm, okay. Anybody you've not spoken to? Anybody of interest, obviously. We have not really, uh, I don't think we've really spoken to George Pollard or Dr. Burko since the murder, have we? I think we spoke to them prior to the murder. Yeah. Um, Maybe I should speak to the curator, ask her opinion about the whole Scrimshaw stuff and Edgar. I mean, he must have been work for, working for her, right? As a grad student, if she's the curator. Maybe, Ooh, he told, I, I, maybe he told her something interesting. I, I think it must be something to do with what Edgar took from the museum and gave to his cousin. When I pull out the uh, the black scrimshaw, which has strange inscriptions all across it that seem to twist and hurt the eye and uh, feels warm to the touch, you know, even though it's, it should be cold bone. My, that is uh, not from a whale, I think. Uh, I wonder, you could, if you, so you were suggesting speaking to the curator, right? Mm -hmm. I was like, well, you, I think maybe as a fresh pair of eyes, you won't be connected so much with us. And mm -hmm. I'm thinking you weren't there at the museum night's oh. opening. You'd be the perfect person to ask the consultant about your newfound hobby of scrimshaw and these strange pictures that you found on the internet about black scrimshaw. Oh, yes. And, uh, we can. Fine. Strange pictures on the internet all the time. I know you always send me those cat things, and they are rather adorable. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I, I do. I have posted my own cat picture on there, actually, and I've gotten uh, likes. I guess. I know forty of them. It's in <laughs> mm -hmm. it's double a, digits. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, it's a very cute, cool cat that I have. I have a cat now. Okay. Uh, but I'm thinking. Hand. 
<laughs> yes. Yeah, that is a cozy item to have. Yeah. Uh, I'm thinking of, you know, if you're amenable to that as an idea, mm -hmm. uh, we take, uh, we mock up a bunch of, you know, we take pictures of Scrimshaw off the internet or whatever, and we do like a, a picture of this that's not identifiable. Like, I found this among that. Like, what can you, you know, like, so we, you can pretend to be clueless that this is the, the picture of the Scrimshaw taken from the museum. Yes, I will um, maybe use my phone to take a picture of this and then just say I found this on the internet because I don't think I have to mock up anything because I don't know how to much. Oh, let, let, let me, and I push aside okay. the menu, I push the menu of the, uh, the, the book nook out of the shot, out of the frame of the picture <laughs> so that it's not instantly <laughs> identifiable as Brindlewood Bay. <laughs> <laughs> So it sounds to me like maybe we're kind of going forward to the next morning and we might do like a, a once around of, 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 of things. So let's, let's start with, with Violet. Does that sound okay? Um, uh, so Violet, you will go by the museum in the morning uh, and you'll, you'll run into a curator right away, uh, Dr. Burko, who clearly seems upset. Uh, and uh, you're not entirely certain why, uh, but but she's uh, clearly that something has 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 happened and gone wrong and so on and and uh, she would say oh Violet Violet uh, um, uh, it's, uh, uh, I don't think we have any any books for you to uh, rebind today oh I'm I'm not here for books actually I was I did come to see you and ask you a question but I see you look frightfully upset would. Can I help you? Maybe we should sit down somewhere and you can tell me what's going on. My question can wait. She'll, she'll say, well, let's, let's get a little, uh, go to the, the, the gift shop. They have a mm -hmm. Quarig there. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, we still got a few left of the pumpkin spice coffee, so. Oh, very nice. I was in California and they have it there, frozen pumpkin, pumpkin spiced latte, but it's not the same. She'll sit down with you and she'll mention that she was called last night because someone, um, she doesn't know that Iris is a friend of yours or anything. So this woman, Iris, who had been here during the murder, broke into the museum. Uh, she had tried to arrange a meeting with me earlier on in the day um, and then hit, I had maybe avoided her, um, and uh, she showed up. And then uh, last night they they found her, and they, apparently there are there are secret doors in the museum Whoa. we didn't know about, and apparently she knew about them and got caught and stuck in one, and hit her head. Um, and I don't know what's going on. That is very troubling. I, uh, I mean, maybe she got just got lost. Maybe, maybe. And I mean, some some people. When you get a certain age, not everybody's got got it totally together. I'm sad, sad she to say. She did seem really singularly focused on some things. Like oh. I, I know that sometimes people with with those kinds of conditions will get obsessive about things. Oh, well, it, that's. You know, old age, nobody's <laughs> ever said that, that not getting old is, is a lot of fun. But I do, wouldn't let it trouble myself. I mean, there are secret passages. That is uh, <laughs> that is uh, interesting, I think. I mean, did you didn't know about this? I mean, you're the curator of this museum and you didn't know that there are secret passages. That's interesting. Should be a fire hazard, shouldn't it? Um, so I think you're pressing her on some things because it's clearly some stuff she isn't saying here. Mm -hmm. So I yeah. think maybe we're, we're moving to that meddling move. Oh, yeah. Let me go to the meddling move. What's the meddling move do? I totally forget about all it's these the moves. Fi figure yeah. things out. Ah, yeah, yeah. I want to find a clue. Yes. Yes. I'm gathering information. I would like to roll the presence because I'm really trying to be on our good side and making her comfortable with my presence here. That sounds good. Yeah, and I've, I've, uh, I've raised my presence with my advance that I had Ooh. from somewhere. So this might be good. No, oh yeah, I've got a seven. Yay, yay for the advance. 
Um, I think that you get a little bit from her before she kind of like clams up, mm -hmm. no pun intended. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, that 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 she she really stops talking and maybe maybe gets a little bit suspicious. But what you will get from her is that she's worried about this because there had been a a weird thing. They didn't know if it was a break in or somebody did it during the day or what. But someone had broken uh, into one of the displays in the scrimshaw room and had taken uh, taken a piece of scrimshaw from from the exhibit mm. um, and then and then she kind of like she clearly maybe kind that's of cuts when, the conversation off that's maybe when i overreach and show her the picture of about because this is about scrimshaw and i wonder if it looked did it look like this and she looks and he goes no that's i don't think that's real scrimshaw that's that's way too black to be real scrimshaw. Oh, well, okay. Hmm. No, it was so. a, a local thing. Uh, 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 one of old pieces from, uh, I think, from the old Deep Rover. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but but she then goes. I, I have to, I have to go now. Uh, yes, of course. Let don't let me keep you, dear. I'll just wander around a bit if you don't mind. Look at the things. Certainly. certainly. Uh, donation boxes over there. Oh, of course, of course. Um, while that is going on with Violet, Bobby, what do you want to do? Um, I thought I might um, just uh, try and get a little bit more information on the thesis. Um, and I'm trying to decide if I should go talk to Krish or to Schwartz um, to get that, because Krish might know something about um, Edgar's thesis advisor and such. It's, it's up to you. I don't know. Does the, any of the other ladies have any ideas, any suggestions? Um, I think I'll go talk to Schwartz. OK. okay. He is, he is still around in uh, the area. Uh, and the clue, by the way, from Violet's is the broken display case. Do you mind company on this one, Bobby? Oh, I always love company. Just because having spoken to Professor Schwartz before, it might be useful to have the whole thing, you know? Now, I know I rubbed someone the wrong way last time. I can't remember. That would be Rose. I believe Rose has a condition. Am I yeah, right about that? I did have, no, I didn't have a condition. No, I, I got creeped out. That's right. You got creeped out. And was it by Schwartz? I think it was Schwartz. Yes. I I didn't offend anybody until Absalom. <laughs> the, uh, and he was just offended by our entire conversation. Um. So you can find Professor Schwartz. He is actually at uh, the local library. Uh, and uh, he, is, he is reading through some back catalogs uh, of things. And uh, when he sees you come in, he kind of, you know, very clearly kind of shuts it and puts some other things over what he was looking at. And uh, he'll say, ah, Miss, uh, Miss Barbara. Uh, and your, your lovely friend, uh, Miss Rose. Yes, we were. We were ladies. Uh, we're, we're okay. Settle down. Okay, we're. <laughs> I'm glad to see you're uh, still in town. Um, uh, I was asked not to leave until they have this matter sorted out, and I had some research to do in the area. Oh, what are you? What are you researching? Uh, I'm trying to cross-reference some of the the, the whaling reports and. Uh, things that uh, local local sources are often the, the most vital and rich so just just more of a more of a, a fishing expedition huh. uh, I see. wow uh, you you've come to the right place sir. this is a uh, most one i wonder do they have 
excuse me and i'm going to go off and uh, i'm going to i wonder if they have my husband's books here and i'm going to go and have a look uh, and this is a this is a a ruse that is setting up me coming back over plopping some books down on the table and then swapping it out for his his books at some nice point. that but seems fair you that that would can trigger whenever you know so how can how can i help you bobby oh you know um uh, we came across Edgar's uh, academic uh, work, and I was just wondering if you um, had had a chance to see it before, and if you had an opinion on um, uh, opinion on it. I think maybe it could give us some insight as to why he fell victims to such to the most heinous crime. So I kind of put the thesis in front of Schwartz. Let's have you roll meddling. Um, I am going to use your reason. Uh, because of my creeped out, though, do I get a... I think you definitely are taking disadvantage on this. Okay. So now, you, do you have any cozy items or anything that you think could be appropriate to... Oh, good call. They are all marked. Uh, the ones that I might use. Um... Unless you put a wrench on the table. <laughs> <laughs> Junk. <laughs> well, I'll just leave this wrench here. It's a very heavy <laughs> wrench with maybe a little bit of blood on it. Um, I don't think I can. Okay. Let's have you... With disadvantage. Whoops, I pushed the wrong button. Okay, I rolled a four and a one, plus one is six. Do you want to mark a crown? Do I? Yes. I will mark how I was an imperfect uh, sister or daughter. And we'll... We'll come back to that. Uh, you can see that the pulling out of the thesis like disturbs him, and and he's like, oh, "Really? Where 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 did you come across come across this?" I flat out lie about where it came from. He says, "Uh." Yeah, it, it's very interesting. I, I wouldn't want to look if it's someone else's material or thesis. You know, I wouldn't, you know, really want to look at it too closely myself in case it overlapped. And certainly, you know, accusations of plagiarism and, and all that. Um, does, does he have any notes on the table? Can I quickly glance to see if maybe the handwriting on the thesis is similar to any notes that he's made? I tell you what, here will be the clue. Uh, I think that when Rose comes back and kind of does that shift of books, like I get slammed down in there and he's clearly still very discombobulated from the presence of the thesis. And when Rose kind of pulls that aside, you will notice that he has been actually kind of hiding that he's been looking at some financial reports from the Whaling Museum and has clearly been annotating in his own hand, like figuring out where Pollard's doing purchases from and circling those. And that handwriting that you see of Schwartz's annotations definitely matches the handwriting on the thesis. Great. And he's, he, he will, will, uh, clearly be be shaking he says uh, but but um y y you know um uh, i and then he looks at his watch and he's like i i need to go uh i'm sure you do uh rose i believe our work here is done of course uh Oh, let me put these back and uh, pick up Arthur's books, slipping uh, the other one into that. Uh, and um, we, have, we leave and uh, I, you know, 
if this book is of any relevance whatsoever. It looks like the book he was just using to kind of cover the fact that he was going over and probably trying to, to cross-reference like maybe other people that were selling items that, you know, there's some names, like he's trying to figure out where Pollard buys yeah, stuff. Yeah. I, I just, you know, I thought I would ask in case it was like, you know, the cults of New England or something. <laughs> like the Vermis mistress. Yes. Um, <laughs> Uh, so the the clue is the financial reports on that one, um, and okay. I think the cost is that Schwartz is very alert now to the your investigations, as it were. Do you want me to do my flashback or should we say that? Yeah, like when you're when you're sitting there after this this meeting with him, you're still a little creeped out. What what is what is it that we get the, the flashback for you? Um, I think my uh, I'm gonna do imperfect daughter. Um, and I think the financial reports reminds me of how my parents' business ended up in somewhat financial dire straits. They were recent immigrants. To America, and they were they were trying to do right, but they got maybe mixed up in um, some things that they shouldn't have gotten mixed up on. And I, I instead of being supportive, I kind of called them on it in a way mm -hmm. that uh, uh, was um, very upsetting, uh, and it it made it difficult for us to ever repair that. I mean, I think maybe I that was when I ran away from home or something like that. Oh wow. That's that is that is that's a good one and uh, uh, dark. Um, Iris, do you have something you want to do, or shall we shall we rope people back together to to talk? Um, I I do have something. So I I think you know from our discussion at the, at the cafe and thinking things back over, you know it was, it was someone in the museum that was after me someone who knew something about the place. She's thinking back to her conversations with the very sweaty George Pollard and suddenly it all clicks in place. I mean, it obviously has to be him. He's, he's large, he could have knocked me out in one blow even if he is sort of tubby and pathetic. Um, the, the museum isn't doing very well because no one wants to visit a like local history whaling museum, but she's read it on, on the internet about all these, like the rise of murder and ghost tourism. So obviously he set up this whole plan to like revamp his entire museum here and set up ghost tours or gruesome murder tours through Brindlewood. And I just got too close to finding the evidence. So I need to follow him around. I need to, you know, track him through his whole day and just be there when he does something incriminating because he's obviously going to do something incriminating that'll prove it. And then I can take all of my proof to Deputy Anderson. That's, that feels definitely meddling. <laughs> yeah, a little. Um, and it, it is just like, she manages to find him fairly on early on in his day and wherever he goes throughout the town, she just follows behind. And then when he stops somewhere, she sets up her little portable easel and I'm just painting nature. Don't even look at the old woman painting nature. Let's, uh, let's have you roll. Uh, presence, composure. I think composure to hold hold your your act together. Not just immediately accuse him of the first like jaywalking or something. Right. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's see, I think nothing particularly great here. Okay. Uh, seven plus one is eight. An eight. Uh, are you good with that, or do you want to use a crown to raise it up to a ten? Um, I'm curious to hear what the complication would be. Uh, so I think you're going to get a clue, but the complication is Pollard is going to confront you very loudly and very publicly. 
No, I think that makes sense. Okay. Uh, I think there is a bit where Pollard goes to a, like a coffee shop and he's got a decent phone and you see him looking, you know, while he's drinking his coffee, he's looking through the phone and he clearly goes back and looks at an email uh, and then kind of goes and looks and he looked at it again. Like it's clearly bugging him. Um, but then there's the Pollard, Pollard, uh, 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 egg sandwich for Pollard. And he stands up and uh, goes up and goes to get his, his sandwich. And you make your way over and you can take a look at the email. Um, and you can see it's been like spoofed address and it's anonymous email. Uh, and it's to him and uh, it's, it essentially says, uh, you're going to tell me everything. If you don't, the, you, I'll, I'll reveal where you're selling your, your things to. And it's, it's this kind of long litany. This person is clearly trying to blackmail Pollard uh, on, uh, on some malfeasance at the museum and trying to get information from, from Pollard. And, and I think because she's seen it on a couple of TV shows, she like she's the way she's seen this is as soon as he gets up, she just casually comes by and like sits down in the seat right next to his and she's sort of leaning over. And she's like, oh, well, I'm just going to forward this to Rose because I know she has an email address. And somehow that ends up with the entire screen like zoomed in to where there's just like two letters that are the whole screen. And she's desperately trying to figure out how to fix it. And Pollard turns around and you are doing that and he roars at you. What are you doing with my phone? Oh, oh, is this your phone? I was just looking for, oh, hello, Mr. Pollard. I was just looking for who this, this phone was just sitting here by itself. I've saved your phone. And he's like, you, you busybody you and 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 he and your paintings that you bring are terrible and you know he 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 just lays into a stream of of abuse at you clearly he is cracked um and well, I at think, least I know what good light bulbs look like. And I don't go attacking old people who just happen to be watered into the wrong room. Where's your flashlight now, Mr. Ha? Huh? Or your sap? Did you use a brick? I'm going to press charges now. And oh, oh, you should. We should go see Deputy Anderson right now and tell her about everything that's going on. He grabs his phone and he starts dialing the police. No, do it. I want you to do it. I'm not afraid Hello? of her. Deputy Anderson, uh, uh, I'm I'm going to press charges against uh, Deputy Iris. Anderson. I'm going to press charges against Mr. Pollard for attacking me in the museum. I think that for all your bravado, there is a certain amount of being yelled at, which is the worst, in public by someone, um, and then the humiliation when Deputy Anderson comes and. Uh, starts reading you your rights, Iris. No, that, you're here because, listen, you have to listen to me. He's obviously doing some, can't you see? Miss look, Iris, look don't at make his me email. cuff you. you warrant, warrant his email or something. Don't make me cuff you. I, no, we don't have to, look, I'm just, I'm just trying to and help. And she pulls out her cuffs. Fine, look, fine. No, I'm going. I, I, I didn't even. She want grabs to your videos. arm and she yanks you up and out of the coffee shop. And she, she walks you a couple of buildings away over to her cruiser, and she says, "Iris, stay away from Pollard." I'm telling you, there's something fishy going on with him. He's hiding something at the museum. Stay away from Pollard, or the next time I am going to put you in the back of this cruiser and take you down to the station. Possible. You never listen to any sense. Do you understand me? Understand this. Walls <laughs> played muttering. <laughs> 
<laughs> let's take five and then let's bring the crew back together. And I think we need to, to maybe move to the, the theorize at that point. Does that sound okay? So, so let's I'd say that. either a theorize or if someone to do a cozy move, just because we haven't done any. For That's, the true. Thing. That's true. That's um, true. Let me, uh, oops, let me uh, take five so I can get some yeah. more coffee.
you know, the problem with having all of these wonderful recurring NPCs and uncovering more about the conspiracy is that this whole murder, all I can think about is, you know, Krauss, Anderson, etc., and like Carfax and, um, you know, I'm instantly like, who's the patsy of the conspiracy here rather than who's murdered someone, which uh, you're muted. Blue. If you can, if you can wrap them into the solution. Yeah. Yeah. It's when I did, that did occur to me, but I feel like, you know, I feel like they weren't, Anderson's the only one who was strong enough. And now that I look back at our notes, I'm like, actually our whole suspicion about Anderson was based upon the thing that we turned out to be wrong exactly you know which i think is quite an interesting twist right yeah especially since there's still a little get guilt haunting you perhaps for what happened to the calls yeah case. yeah well i mean this is what happens when um what's she called uh murder she wrote main character um fletcher jessica fletcher yeah this is what happens when jessica fletcher's wrong <laughs> you know which we've never seen. Uh, so Patrick, what condition do you think from that interaction Iris is going to end up with? Is it, is it shaken? Is it some form of humiliation? Is it anger? What do you, what do you think she's going to walk away with as her cost for that meddling? The conditions in this, are they like personal things they or are, are they like are personal. rumors for monster hearts no they're more personal things and if they're appropriate you get disadvantage on a check gotcha um no it'd be it'd be something about like the the shame of being dragged out in a yelling argument by the deputy absolutely okay uh also i did just change out the cozy move for the revised cozy move under basic moves, uh, as you can see, it's it's much simpler. Basically, it's when you have an intimate moment with another maven, while one of you is engaged in your cozy activity, you may each clear an appropriate condition. If it's your cozy activity, you can also stumble on a clue relevant to an active mystery. Uh, tell the keeper what it is. The clue cannot conclusively solve the mystery by itself. So it gives a little more weight to your cozy activity uh, uh, in that it's a, a, a means of uh, gaining a clue. And you also kind of define the clue as opposed to the normal clue move. Is that right? I think, I think that's what, uh, yeah, because you tell, tell the keeper what it is. Yeah, so it's a useful way of maybe adding a clue to frame, you know, to make more of the clues make sense. Mm -hmm. That's cool. That's really cool. That was on there before. It's just stripped out a lot of the other things from the cozy move. Yeah, I, I actually think so because it was as long as uh, you know uh, up to where the gold crown mystery move begins there. So that's it's been, it's been so long since we did uh, the cozy move. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'd like to bring bring everybody back together uh, for a, a discussion, either to move to a cozy move or to to go to the theorize here. Um, w uh, given what's happened, uh, uh, Bobby, w do you think it's appropriate to continue to do this conversation in the cafe or would you do it at someone's house at this point? Um, uh, we've not been to Iris's house, so maybe we should go to Iris's house. Iris? What is your house like? Um, so the house is fairly old. It's it's backed up to a um, large river that, that runs through uh, sort of the edge of town. Um, inside, it's all like wood paneling and 30-year-old furniture and like crocheted Afghans on things. There's like macrame art hanging from the wall that's like owls and birds and things um and then there's lots of framed uh watercolor paintings that are all irises mostly of um 
like birds and and flowers but there is a series of like her children when they were all young and she did sort of portraits of each of them um i think where we'd be meeting would be she has like a really large screened in back porch uh that looks out to her yard that runs right down to the river um, and she's got uh, like half of that porch that is taken up by a couple of easels and all of her art supplies. But, you know, there's a little table where she can um, put out some drinks and like store-bought cookies. She doesn't bake anything. Does the river there freeze over at all here in the winter? Yeah, I think so. We're north okay. enough that would happen. Probably a little bit of frost crack ice on that. Um, so the four of you can discuss what you think about the mystery or do we can go to a cozy move? I'm good either way on that. I have a rough theory for everything that we've got in play. Uh, I'm so very nervous about rolling that theorized dice. So I'd love to hear other people's uh, suggestions. So we're going to the theorized thing? I mean, or, or we can move thinking. on. That's, I mean, I'm just, I'm putting it out there that we could, I, I think we could do, you know, I have a workable theory. Um, if we wanted to do a cozy move, we could, uh, someone could clear some conditions and we could also maybe gain another clue that would work um, and give us a boost on that dice roll. Uh, if anyone, if anyone else has got a theory, I think I'd probably like to go second or third on my, because I murdered people last time. I'm not, I'm nervous <laughs> about it. <laughs> Oh, you murdered people last time. Okay. I, I feel like their bloody's on my hands for sure. They they were murdered as a result of certain choices that Rose made. We're rolling with a plus three. Are we? Okay. Then I think we're good enough on the plus three. Uh, I think we should go for it. Anyone have any theories? Though? Well, uh, I missed half of it, so let, I'll let you theorize about this. I mean, I have my theories, but I think uh, Violet at least half believes that maybe you're still making a lot of this up, and let's see <laughs> what you think this all fits together. I think it all fits around this piece of black scrimshaw. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I Iris will enthusiastically share her theory of murder tourism, but I don't know how much traction that gets. <laughs> and Bobby? <laughs> um, I have not thought about it as much as Will has. Um, okay. um, do you want me do you want me to just throw something out, Will, just so you can go second? No, no, I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll go through mine, and we can all share the blame in it. It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, the scrimshaw is at the, the crux of it, right? Um, and Absalom's mother's uh, trust to the museum and the conditions of that trust. Uh, the conditions of that trust are that uh, Betko is appointed, you know, her position, the curator's position is appointed by Amanda Krauss um, and that she has leeway to make purchases for the museum. Uh, sometimes those purchases are vastly at odds with what the museum can afford on its income, uh, which is why they ended up purchasing this black scrimshaw from a, you know, a rather unique antiques buyer somewhere that costs so, so much money, way too much. Drew Pollard's attention, Pollard intercepted it and got um, Edgar to verify it for free because he's a student and Pollard's been using him as a student before when he was work living down here in Brindlewood Bay. Uh, the student verified it and then submitted a paper to Schwartz to do some work and Schwartz sent back all of that and that's brought them all together and then Pollard found out how much money he could get for this Grimshaw now that it's been authenticated and all of that and so he's not concerned about any of the occult stuff he just wants the money and um, ultimately Pollard wanted to sell it the student was adamant that it was an important find you know um, Pollard like they got, they got into uh, the student stole it before it could be stolen by Pollard, and then Pollard killed him trying to, you know, like in a fit of uh, anger when confronting him. Uh, Betko was the one who was in the, um, the secret passageways and saw the whole thing, but as far as she was concerned, 
it was just the end of a complication. You know, she thought she could just go and fetch the scrimshaw from the cabinet. She wasn't aware it had already been taken. And uh, those keys that we found were Pollard's keys to the um, the passage, the secret passageways uh, that fell out of his pocket. And I think the only thing I haven't covered there is the wallet. And the broken display case. Because well, the broken that display was, case. Uh, that was not the black scrimshaw that was taken from it, from there. That that's what Batco said. Maybe she's lying, though. Oh no, she's to in in my view, she's totally lying. And okay. It was the black scrimshaw. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No. Okay. Betco, it, Be Betco is a member up. of the conspiracy. Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay. Uh, this this mm -hmm. murder is adjacent to the conspiracy rather than directly mm -hmm. conspiracy related. You know. And you. And we think that Pollard killed yeah. Nickerson, right? Pollard and Nickerson. why was his wallet, wallet emptied out? Because there were maybe some 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 receipts that he had, or something like that. Ooh, or maybe or just dead. like a hasty attempt to make it look like a mugging oh. in broad daylight in a public yeah. museum. Well, it's pro yeah, that's possible. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure I, that Dalrymple thought it was just a murder, a robbery gone wrong, or something like that. I think that's where he kept the pass for his um, hotel room. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, that that makes sense, yes. And the so not realizing that he passed off the scrimshaw Pollard was mm -hmm. trying to get to where he'd hidden it properly. Yes, and the gloves were because he had enough presence of mind to put them on because he this was he was where he brought those gloves no it, the gloves were edgar's that he wore when mm -hmm. he broke into the display case and took the scrims yeah exactly mm -hmm. okay and pollard discarded them because why was he where he did wanted to avoid questions about why this kid was wearing gloves uh, uh, no I, I think the kid discarded the gloves already before. oh all right yeah, yeah okay uh, that that seems right. like a theory Mm -hmm. oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you roll, Will? Uh, somebody else roll for me, please. I just don't want their responsibility again. Fair <laughs> enough. Does someone else wish to to take the hit for Will? Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna Bobby? throw the one towards Bobby. Yes. What? <laughs> All right. You're rolling with a plus three because you were mm -hmm. there when it went bad last time. So. <laughs> the blood is partially on my hands too. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm rolling theorize, rolling 2d6 plus 3, and I rolled a 12. Oh, Ooh. well. So uh, I think uh, that uh, you can put the pieces together. And you will realize that Pollard's going to have to, I mean, his next step is going to be to, to take things and he either needs to, to take more and get out and get them sold uh, or he needs to take care of Burko. Mm -hmm. And that is the, the, the next step logically on your line. So how, how do you want to, to take down Pollard? We go into the secret places and the, the secret passageways and watch him stealing stuff from the museum and ringing the police. Uh, and basically, it's all a big sting inside the. Uh... I think that's that's perfect, and I think mm -hmm. I think we can can uh, uh, see you go in with the skeleton key that Iris has and make your way into that that oh. room. Yeah, I think I'll. I'll keep Burko occupied because A, she's in danger, and B, we don't want her to be around when, when stuff goes down. So, and C, we will have a use, useful, workable relationship with her for whatever they're really doing with this back scrum show, right? Absolutely. And uh, so I, I, you catch Burko and, you know, uh, uh, catch her at a, a, a diner or whatever and are, are talking with her, keeping her. Uh, uh, Rose, Bobby, Iris, you're watching. You probably can you maybe do the thing where you film with your phone and you're still looking at the thing. So uh, uh, wait, wait, 
and then the lights come on, but they're still too dim. Uh, uh, and you see Pollard comes in and he uh, goes over to the cases and starts opening them and taking things out and putting in replicas in different places that he's got and, and filling up his uh, bag. And I think then as he's doing that, that that's when the, the big you know police mag light comes on and uh, hits him. And uh, you'll hear Deputy Anderson go, well, shit. <laughs> And I think we cut to the police station with, with Burko, you know, having, you know, kind of been pushed a little bit by Violet, you know, spilling what she knows about the situation. Uh, and Anderson, you know, filling out her report and Pollard in custody. And she's like, all right. Ladies, I, I think that's everything. So what, what, what's, what's everything, dear? I think that's the entire case against Pollard who murdered this young man, Edgar. Mm -hmm. in, in, oh, yes. You're, you're saying it's the entire thing, Deputy Anderson. Okay. I, I, I yes. You're welcome, dear. Deputy, I believe you owe our friend Iris an apology. I'm sorry, Iris. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. My hearing is just not what it used to be. What, what was that, dearie? I am sorry, Iris. It's okay. You young people, you get very impetuous sometimes. And you just don't want to listen to the wisdom of age. But don't worry. I'll be sure to help you out with the next several investigations you go through to sort of get you used to how this sort of thing works. Thank you. You're so welcome, dear. And I think that's the, the cut out that we do on that particular uh, mystery. Yes. Uh, I just wanted to, I mean, it doesn't have to be done now, I guess, but- um, Well, no, I want to- uh, the, the 12 the, plus, the dark conspiracy. Oh, that's right. Burko. I forgot that you get that uh, from that. It's gotta be Burko. That, that seems the obvious choice to me. And Violet's got her off by herself. Let me let me look at this again. I'm not worried. I've got um, I've got I, I've gotten Mace before she because she she talked about that and I thought it was a good idea to have that. So I've got that now. And, and Cozy item is, Mace. No, maybe this is sort of post the arrest of Pollard, and post Violet. You may be hinting that that Pollard was going to maybe that there was something deeper and more dark uh, and that that burka was threatened and burka will say i wish i'd never come to this town every one of my decisions has been second guessed by people who clearly have pull in what's going on with the museum. Amanda Krauss um, has certainly, I don't know what's up with her, but she has consistently been here and been giving orders. And The, I know that you and your friends worked with that podcaster. 
-hmm. And I, I, she came through a couple of times and is clearly some kind of middle person for whatever is going on. I don't know how, but there was a ship. I don't know what it means, but there was a ship called uh, the Deep Reaver. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's like the foundational ship for for Brindlewood. Like the, they did a big a big set of whalings, and then the, the the city got really wealthy after that. Everything that we've ever gotten that seems to be part uh, or related to the the Deep Reaver, Krauss and her people have bought it out, have taken it from us before we could display it. And um, uh, just to clarify this, the podcaster is a middleman for Krauss or? Yeah, she's uh, she, okay. like, like I, uh, she's come up through a couple of times. I, I think mm -hmm. that she's, she's working for Krauss or something. I know there are others in town. Yeah, they, she has. A they asked people. me to keep an eye on Absalom. Mm -hmm. Like they're, and I know he was clearly poking around in their business. Mm -hmm. But I don't know what, I don't know what's going on. This is just something creepy here. I think at that point, I will try to calm her down a little, like maybe this is, so you know how this is with the middle, middle New England towns. There is always, there is always something weird going on in the history of these towns and you shouldn't, you shouldn't read too much into it really. It's, it's mostly, it's mostly some sort of foxy tradition. I think it might not be be that worrisome, but if you hear more, maybe you can give me a call. I mean, I've studied this town and I've read a lot about it. So if we put our heads together in the future, maybe we can. I don't know if I want to stick around, but if you think it's safe here. Dearie, I've lived here for a while and so have my friends. I don't think it's unsafer than anywhere else. And I think we cut from that to a scene where we see some figures and they are cloaked and we see them standing there and we hear like the squelch of like, like when an like octopus or squid is kind of dropped onto a table and we hear some chanting and the voices kind of get raised and go on and on. And I think that cuts to downtown Brindlewood and we see Cornelius Absalom step out into the street and we see this truck barrel out of nowhere, screech, hits him. And I think that's the point at which his body flies and hits the front window of the cafe. And he's just dead. He's the owner of the museum, right? No, he's a guy who is investigating all of this stuff. Oh, okay. I, I missed him. He was a donor to the museum. I, and I suspect the tattoo connects his mother to the conspiracy, which is why he's so concerned with it. So uh, that's the end of that. Now, you did solve a mystery, so I'll go ahead and give you an XP for that in case that takes you up to five. Um, and let's cut forward. Let's do some cozy scenes here. We're maybe a, a couple of weeks, maybe even three, we're getting to late December, the, the, the Christmas holidays here in Brindlewood. Snow has finally fallen seriously, and we've got you know several inches of it on the uh, the street they've they've just replaced the cracked front window on the cafe uh, and uh, you know it's it's cold and crisp 
Bobby, what do we see for you for your cozy scene? I think she is uh, wrapping presents. Uh, and does it have to do with my cozy activity or it can be anything? It can be anything. Yeah, she's wrapping presents and putting them in boxes to send to Boston uh, for her uh, children and uh, grandchildren. What kinds of things are you sending them? Um, mostly uh, books and things that she got off the grandkids' uh, wish, Amazon wish list that she has no idea what they are, but they're like uh, Xbox video games. Um, but she orders them, has them sent to her so she can wrap them uh, nicely. Um, and, um, uh, and then she puts them uh, in, a, in a box. But um, she is, um, uh, she does put, um, gives her both of her daughters in the same box. So the daughters have to like come together and figure out who's, who's is who's. Um, so she wants to save a little bit of money on the postage. So she puts all of that uh, in the box, um, but mostly cookbooks and for the daughters and then uh, Xbox games and Legos for the kids. I think as you're moving kind of the books and things around and getting things set, I think you'll move one of these coffee table books and you'll see that encyclopedia of tattoos. You did, didn't Rose have it? You, know, you can't remember, but it's there, and and you don't think it was there before. Um, uh, it. Um, sorry, I'm just looking at my cozy vignettes. Yes. Oh. Um, yeah. So she sort of. Um, picks it up and uh, I, I sit back down on my couch and I start to flip through it without paying a lot closer attention. And I feel like the, the thing that Absalom marked is still marked in there. Absolutely. There are a number of other related shapes and tattoos that she's starting to feel like maybe she's seen around. Especially town. because at least one of them, when you look down, is a very familiar mermaid tattoo looks like that pin that you put away and then let's cut to violet uh violet uh what is I'm your i'm a little confused about the whole thing because I've read that the cozy move is about having an intimate moment with another oh, maven. So there, at the start of a, a mystery star session, you do like a little cozy vignette with ah, each okay, person. That's yeah, this is the, so sorry, that's this what is we're doing. Yeah, we're not yeah. doing the cozy move. We're yeah. doing a cozy it's vignette. Like, it's like the okay. credits. Yeah. yeah, okay, okay. Then that, that confused me. So I'm oh, fine. Sure, sure. Um, uh, what do we okay. see you doing? <sighs> what do we see me doing? Um, because uh, I think what I'm doing here is I'm, yeah, I know what I'm doing. I have for some reason or other um, kind of convinced, guilt tripped, whatever Sheriff Dalrymple into letting me look over the historical police documents because they are not well maintained. Because you know uh, this is uh, not a new city. You have to you have to uh, you have to have uh, police records going back years and years before everybody anybody saw, thought of about computers or stuff like that. So I think I've I've gone up to him and I've uh, told him that this is this so that the whole archive police archive is in a basement and it's a disgrace because of all the water that uh, that seeps into there, and I think that he should let someone who has experience with that maybe go and uh, sort through there and and get get the old uh, records bound into book shapes because I feel that. That's probably a good good thing. So okay, only 
only things that are over 40 years old and it's any case before 40 years you can you can bind up but nothing nothing recent no i don't want recent recent is boring recent is all on your computer stuff thing anyways and and uh and I'm sure you have a, a very good idea about what these were about. But no, I'm looking for older documents that might be a uh, victim, might fall victim to environmental conditions. And we don't want that, right? Might and I, I think we will get a shot of you down in the basement, you know, mm -hmm. piecing through those, those records uh, down in there and pulling it out. Um, there are some gaps clearly some fires uh, mm. that occurred. Um, yeah, I meant to gather clues about the deep river and stuff like that. But then, you know, I like written stuff. I like binding books. And I'm, maybe I like myself get overwhelmed by this a little and, and just start, oh my gosh, this doesn't belong here. And, and I totally forget about the, actually reading this. I think there is a moment when you're down there in that basement, when you're really kind of absorbed going through these papers, you know, filing and re like really looking at interesting things when just for a second, just maybe for a, a few seconds, you hear this creaking and it's almost like the room sways, like you're in the belly of a boat just for a little bit that damp and it, and you kind of lurch for a second before like you yeah you bring yourself back to to steady it was clearly you've been down here too long mm. Mm. yeah well iris what is your cozy moment um so if it's getting cold, if it's getting wintry, um, I think we would see Iris down on like the, the shoreline uh, of the bay. Um, she's got her like heavy wading boots on. She's got like a, a hunting jacket under her vest of ubiquitous pocketude. Um, and she's out there with an easel set up on the shore and she's sort of uh, like she's painting a, a nature scene. There's some gulls in the air, but you know, there's mist coming down towards the ocean and there's the, the, the ocean sort of lapping up there. Um, yeah, go ahead. And uh, what are you painting? Um, she's, uh, painting the the gulls diving um but you know there's the the general background i think there's like a a ship or two out there on the water um there's the sort of bleak shoreline there as we're moving towards the colder months i think there's that absorption that you get of you know looking at the scene looking at your painting looking at the scene looking at your painting looking at your scene and the moment when you look back and you see some of the gulls and you don't remember painting this, but you see the, the like tentacle, like, like they grabbed an octopus, like something dripping from their beaks. And they look so moist on, on the, the, the canvas there and it just kind of uh, this the moment that you kind of look away like look around to see if anyone sees this and look back it's gone I think she's like she sort of leans in you know she's she's touched there on the painting where it looks so moist but the paint is already set um, and she's got this confused look on her face and she stands up, like works her way slowly down to the beach to where, to where those gulls were. Um, I don't know, I don't think she finds anything scuffed in the sand there, but we get a sort of like overhead camera view of her going down the beach. Uh, and as she stands up and she's walking towards it, we just see these gusts of wind that are like blowing the dune grass and 
it's almost like it's following her like as she moves forward there's just this line of doom grass that almost seems to be reaching out towards her perfect Rome. and then i also have oh, yeah. uh the, the oh yeah i'll come back to the recording in a in a, cool in a moment um cool. rose He wasn't by your hand, but boy, that other guy died. Someone who was investigating things parallel to you. Do you think Sanchez ever came to town? Came to talk to you yet? Um, I don't, I think that Sanchez uh, said that she was, I don't think she has come to town yet. No, I think that she said, that, oh, another thing has taken me you know to somewhere else but check in soon you know um super, super smiles and and you know, e emotes and emojis on her her texts yeah and rose's back are just the same you know like heart 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 kind of see you soon like liking all of her stuff on um instagram every time it pops okay. up okay and so what's your cozy vignette what do we see for you uh See, so I think it's like our, you know, it's basically Rose making uh, breakfast in the morning, like just you know, like eggs and toast and coffee, and things like that, and then sitting it all out on the table, uh, going over to a sack of books off the, off the shelf, coming and putting it down, and then looking out onto the street, drawing the curtains around every room, every window in there, and making sure the door's locked, and then reaching into a uh, like a box like underneath the sink, pulling out the scrimshaw putting it down on the table and starting to open up all of these different books and uh, read through them. And I think the thing that is disturbing in the sort of the darkness that you kind of create here, the like a little bit of light, is that the scrimshaw doesn't give off light, but the quality of darkness around it is different something something about it is different and it's almost like when you kind of put your hand near it like uh uh like those those globes the van de graaff globes where you kind of put your hand you kind of feel the field before you mm. touch it it's like that yeah. around it i think that maybe like you know there's etchings and stuff on it they're like catching a reflection of a light source that isn't there mm -hmm. you know um yeah, yeah. and I think there is a moment when you look up and you see Absalom seated across from you. And the makeups, the darkness kind of obscures it, but we can see the, the blood. We know that that's where his head hit and the blood is down there. And he says, why didn't you warn me? It wouldn't have helped. You don't know that. You wouldn't have listened. Next time, send Arthur. We will. And then he's gone. I'd like to even have me like wake up in the chair, you know? And... Oh no, you're still awake. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. You like blink, like you're like expecting to wake up from the dream and you don't. Mm. Iris, uh, you will come back to your uh, house, to your answering machine and uh, she like she comes in the door and does the whole like stamp off all the sand and and ice sort of things and lay all her stuff before she looks up and notices the blinking light. It goes over, hits the button to <laughs> gotta wait for the cassette to rewind. The chunk chunk hits the button to play it forward. Iris, it's worth more than they think much more.
cost someone their life. Never make any sense. I think this answering machine is cutting out sometimes. Says so as she's scratching it down on her notepad where she's got like the previously weirder and weirder messages. Uh, and uh, oh, I did. I put the new definition of the cozy move uh, in our our basic moves. So that that's a replacement text. Um, let's take five, and then I want to frame up. Uh, this next mystery and roll into that, if that's okay.
I don't think I'm ever so nervous about a dice roll than this one. Fair enough. More tense than a death saving crow. So I, I did get an advancement with that mystery. Uh, and I think I'm going to take the I go, Colt Seavers move, which is once per session and get a 12 plus on any roll related to a wild or daring physical feat. That seems appropriate. I think it fits with her. Well, was, was that uh, Night at the Whaling Museum? That's the Josh Horowitz that we played uh, Veiled Fantasy with. Is that yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. It was a really good mystery set. I enjoyed it. I liked it. Really good. Really good. I'm, I really want to do an occult thing with the, you know, but like, because you define the occult moves, right? I'm like, I don't know what's a good one to do it because I'm like, I want to know who's a cultist. No, that kind of breaks some stuff. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like how, how, how many things to break without cheating kind of thing. Well, I mean, you know, you know, PBTA, so you have a sense of what the, the range of, of moves are. So I, I don't think that's, that's too out of, uh, and, out of the you realm. know, if, if you're going to have it for a while and you might use it multiple times, maybe start with something that's more like Ouija board investigating a particular mystery that we're on and slowly spin it out into looking into cult stuff. Oh, no, I definitely want it to be straight into the occult stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no breaks on it. But um, yeah, it's because of the, you know, that the goal of this is the mysteries, right? And the murders and the clues and the the problem before you and your obstacles are like, you know, you take conditions and things. But um, it's not, you know, you're, the, the moves are, the day move and the night move are already cover a lot almost everything yep and the meddling move covers everything else so there's like i'm not sure where the room is in between to to exploit for the occult you know it's interesting i think it it maybe has to be you know a, a way of getting something very very specific very easily mm. that that you know uh i i haven't thought about it too much but uh, well i i will think about it and um, I'm open to suggestions from anyone. Cause I would like to think of this as not Rose's piece of magic scrimshaw, but everyone's piece of magic Everyone scrimshaw. can have a, a, a share in the burden of the scrimshaw. Yes. Is, Will, are you thinking the trigger is fairly mundane, but involves the scrimshaw? Or do you want it to be like, we have to sort of actively participate in some weird ritual? I think... Uh, I think it want, I want it to be weird, um, but maybe like it happens by itself with the scrimshaw after being around it for so long, or it's enough, you know, or it's as simple as like we get blood on it or something, and then that's the effect that kicks in. You okay. know what I mean? Like, um, I don't know what that effect would be, though, because I don't think that we. I don't want to like look in a book and research a ritual and you know dance around a room and summon Shubnigareth and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but maybe there is a way of researching what the, the scrimshaw and figuring out a ritual. And, and if we use it, then that's uh, maybe up to us, right? Yeah. I like the idea of us di discovering that, yeah, there is a ritual. Yeah, this ritual could help us find the entrance to the cave. But well, but there there has to be a but. If we definitely, definitely, if we find ourselves in any mysterious caves underneath Brindlewood Bay, that that's definitely going to be a prompt for a, something, yeah. A guide of some kind? Yeah. 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 And, you know, a, apart from a, a dancing, chanting ritual, like if we get into a situation where you think you might want to go to it, just like absentmindedly tracing the runes on it and not realizing what you're doing is a good way to do it the first time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that would yeah. be a thing that only the person who has the scrimshaw actually could do, right? Because you... If you don't yes. have it, you can trace the rules. So. Yeah. These and maybe, are maybe it kind of intrudes on thoughts. Mm. Occasionally, you, you just remember those runes and think about you, them if you've seen them. And they I run around thinking, in your I was head. I thinking about like tasting 
blood or the taste of blood in sea salt sea water or something you know hmm. um that kind of stuff uh but we will see you know like let, if anything anyone has any like oh that could be cool I'm, I'm completely open you know what i mean uh but let's continue with the the murders <laughs> <laughs> Famous last words. Uh, so we take up, we're still kind of in the, the, the deep of winter. Maybe we're just past the, the, the Christmas holidays. We're in that, that weird gap between that and, and New Year's. An unusual time for what, what you're invited to. Uh, essentially, there is a uh, antique store quite nice. There are a lot of like cozy, homey, you know, found in a farm kind of antique stores around. Uh, but there's at least one, uh, Albertines, that does more high-end things. And tourists come here uh, to, to do purchases and so on. And uh, all of you have, besides the scrimshaw, found weird things. And there's a certain draw uh, to come into this because there is a silent auction being done for rarities and oddities here. Uh, and it's being managed by the Aubertines. Uh, they're actually brother and sister. Uh, they are twins. Uh, and uh, they, they, they're known to be quite uh, close to one another. Uh, and they actually have an apartment that's right above their, their very nice, very spacious antique shop. Um, what's happening is, and probably the reason that drew Rose and all of your attention is that they're doing a nice silent auction that is covering the estate of the late Captain Solomon Heimwinkle. Uh, it's a Brindlewood Bay native, uh, and he was a famous a uh, fisherman captain ship here in Brundlewood that did very well for himself. Uh, but when he retired to Brindlewood Bay, he spent his last years as a recluse. Like people, people said they saw him, but it was never confirmed. Things were delivered to the house, all of that. Uh, all of the proceeds from this auction uh, are to go to the Brindlewood Bay Whaling Museum and Education Center. So there are a couple of things that that tweak for you uh, on that. Apparently, that's that was uh, a terms of the captain's will, and if the auction goes well, certainly that will help uh, uh, Burke and the uh, the the Whaling Museum. Uh, she has stuck around uh, uh, despite. Uh, things because of Violet's kind words, and she's probably overseeing uh, the place now. Um, so uh, tell me, uh, Iris, the twins, uh, they're, they're fairly young, maybe 30s, uh, good looking. Uh, they're not identical twins, obviously. Uh, um, besides the fact that uh, they share this love for, you will know, kind of formal, extravagant clothing. Uh, they're, a, they're a little bit night and day. Uh, so uh, what, what, is, what is the public presentation of Pierre Albertine? Um, I, I think his public presentation is very like outgoing and boisterous uh, is very like um, current fashion, constantly changing, never see him in the same outfit twice sort of thing. And it's never, it's never fashion to blend in. Um, and, and, but yeah, I, I think he's definitely like the first one out front. He's the one that gives speeches or, or like opens auctions or meets new people for the first time. And, and Bobby, what is Pauline Aubertine like? I think she's also very warm, but in a much more understated uh, way. Um, neither of them are, uh, I mean, the, I suspect that the auction house is very, I'm sorry, the uh, antiques place is very successful. Um, 
but uh, they end up having to hire people to manage the books and do that kind of stuff because that's just not their thing. But she thrives in a one-on-one -on -one coffee uh, situation. Um, she dresses uh, in simple uh, outfits, uh, usually fairly monochromatic. She's not trying to stand out. Um, and she's a reputation in town for being a good listener. Yeah, they're, they're, they're pricey, but that kind of old school simplicity, yes. pricey. Uh, and she leans in and, and listens. Uh, she's the one who probably hires people to do the book. She's the one of the two that definitely has at least a little bit of that sense. Yes. Um, and uh, uh, we probably spoken to her before. She is just, she, she will, will listen to what people have to say and 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 let them let them talk for a while um violet you've met both of them pierre who's very friendly outgoing uh, you know good with a crowd and you've met pauline uh, which which of them do you like better i think i'm a bit closer to pauline actually because i mean yeah guys who are charming to crowds uh, Barney was like that a bit and I, th that sounds weird now if I say it like that but I kind of like Pauline's more understated manners better doesn't and also I'm I think I feel more comfortable around women than men general as a general rule also yeah. she likes she likes kind of maybe she's more into books than his or her brother is not not bookkeeping but actual books certainly someone who would if if they had a really beautifully bound book would would call you and say you should come down and take a look at this before we we put it out for sale you might might like this it's kind of very conscientious and thinks about you uh you will uh, arrive at this silent auction uh, uh it's it's in the evening they've cleared the sidewalk out front where they've had to shovel it lay down a little bit of uh uh, salt uh, on the sidewalk. Uh, you can see that the town still hasn't taken down the Christmas wreaths or decorations. So we've still got those those red ribbons on the telephone poles and and all of that stuff is is left out there. Uh, you, you know, uh, we're just a couple of days from New Year's. Uh, so the liquor store uh, is doing a, a good business where people are, are loading up uh, with cases of, of booze and taking it out to their car. Uh, uh, and it's a, it's a old, old style shop, like where it was a kind of a, a long store, goes back quite wide. There are, are stairs that go upstairs to where they've remodeled the apartment. There is a, uh, a back room area, but there's a lot of space to walk around, very comfortable place. And, uh, you come in and there are a number of, of people uh, from the town there. Uh, you'll probably see uh, Dr. Jones is there and uh, uh, she will, will, will greet you. Uh, probably see uh, Etienne uh, is there uh, and notably takes his leave when Bobby comes in. Uh, and uh, there are a few others uh, and you look around at beautiful displays and things, you'll see the captain, Heimwinkel's granddaughter, uh, Alma is there. Uh, you'll see uh, the assistant to uh, the Aubertines, Lee is moving around and checking in with people and stuff. And there's a lot of things out on display and there's a little like, they've actually had printed up a little auction book for this uh, and it's quite nicely done. Uh, there are a number of other purchasers there. Uh, Nigel Porter is a local caterer, uh, and he is is you know uh, making up the hors d'oeuvres, and he's got a couple of waiters you know going around and and bringing you drinks, uh, and you start to to mingle for a bit. Tell me, Rose, what auction item calls to you? even though you have absolutely no use for it? Um, a, uh, a 
brass old brass compass yeah it's 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 really lovely it's it's real you can tell it's got that you know a little bit of dents that that show that it was was actually used uh and it has I think a, it's quite a big one as well like a yeah. you know like a ship's one rather than like a pocket one yeah yeah heavy got a real weight to it you could bring it down on someone anyway uh but uh it's uh it's lovely you will move around uh here um how do you think you do at these kinds of parties and mingling situations, uh, uh, Bobby? Uh, Bobby's sort of in her element. She's uh, an antiques uh, collector, though she tends to focus on uh, jewelry. Mm -hmm. So um, even though this stuff is not quite uh, her speed, um, she uh, she's really um just gotten to know the lingo really well gotten to know kind of how these things work really well and this is definitely kind of her her happy place um she doesn't really have much patience for people who are new to this um and so like if she can tell that this is their first auction she sort of moves on to the next and, and i think as you're kind of looking at some of the jewelry you pick up a piece and uh you'll hear that is a very very lovely piece that have a very good eye and you'll see this uh, Hazim Mashwani. You know that he's actually a fashion designer, comes up from Boston. Uh, uh, he's sort of an unusual uh, touristy person, but uh, uh, he says that uh, that's very lovely. Uh, yes, I know you have a very good, very good eye. I mean, oh. um, uh this this must uh date back uh several to the previous century um and i'm surprised it's uh here among old man uh Heinwinkles, uh things but you never know what you're going to find at these things am i right yes. well pauline had called me to say there were some actually quite exquisite objects he, he will pick up what you were looking at he says i i wish i had a better sense of the history of these things i really i really don't for me it's mostly about the aesthetics of it um, well, you can ask me any questions you want. I uh, uh, mostly about the jewelry. I have a fairly good sense of the jewelry. And um, he he will hold out his hand and he'll say, uh, I, "I'm Hazim Meshwani." Oh, and I'm Bobby, and I have a last name that I don't remember. Yes. Okay. And he said, ah, well, it's very nice to meet you. Uh, it's really nice to meet you, and and you came in from. Oh, I'm actually up for the weekend, but I usually come up from Boston. Oh, okay, okay. Is this your first time in Brindlewood? Oh, no, I've, I've been here quite a few times. Oh, well, I haven't seen you around town before. Well, well, you well. see, he, he kind of looks up and his eyes kind of rest on Pauline for a bit. And uh, he says, I, I would just like, like to stop through. Oh, uh, of course, of course. And Iris, what do we see of you? The lights are actually quite bright in here, not dim. It's very well lit, uh, uh, much to your relief. I, I think like on a cocktail napkin, she's making some notes about what these lights are, you know, just to, to share with people. But no, I, um, she's not exactly comfortable in these sort of situations, but she's not the sort of person that would let herself be seen being uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it's great because they always have like, uh, they have nice food, they have a buffet table, and she definitely has a plate that's just like piled with all these finger foods um what she, what is what is the most exotic uh hors d'oeuvre there uh i'm i'm not even sure but it has like half of a shrimp sticking out of it and it's got some green stuff on it and it's all wrapped together and something crunchy and a little spicy it's, mm -hmm. it's too fancy but the shrimp's good yeah it, it 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 might might be is that is that like a little little thai flavoring in there oh blue basil like Thai basil, really nice. Um, um, but she's, you know, in, in deference to the, the fanciness of the situation, she's wearing her fancy outfit, which is without the vest, it makes her feel very uncomfortable, but it's just like a, a black button up shirt and black jeans. And she does have a fanny pack because she can't like, she's gotta have something on her. Um, and I think she she spends the the, evening she's the sort of person that wanders around and says things too loudly like why is that so expensive it's just a book i have a copy of that book at home 
Uh, and I think you'll notice that you're not the le you're not the most dressed down person here. That is definitely this crusty old sailor guy who is kind of standing off to the corner, who is clearly impatiently waiting for the auction to get started. And he's got his pipe that he's chewing on and he's just kind of grumbling there in the corner, just, uh, yeah, God, okay, what's this? Get on this tomfoolery. Um, and uh, uh, he he definitely, as you maybe uh, shift over there, because you're always curious about people, like he gives you definitely the 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 piercing eyes of, you know, kind of stay oh, well, away. That sounds like a challenge. Um, so she will sidle up next to him and say, very helpfully, you know, they don't let you smoke that in here anymore. Not since the kids took over. Oh, you know, I know that. Yeah. No, the kids says it's a public service, all that stuff. You know, I don't smoke it in here anymore. Anyway, that's that all the time. Yeah. I don't, it's, it's, they're really worried about their health and I don't know, public in secondhand something. It's all very. Everybody dies. It's true. That's, that's true. I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. Uh, Iris Glenn. It's, it's lovely to meet you, Captain, I'm assuming. He, he takes out his pipe and he says, I didn't ask your name. No, but I did ask yours. And he puts his pipe back in and he just stands there stoically. I mean, she's not going to be edged off. She stands there stoically next to him and stuffs something large and crunchy in her mouth. <laughs> uh, Violet, what are what are you uh, up to during the sort of the, the lead up to the, to the auction here? I'm keeping in the background. I'm not much of a social butterfly. Um, I'll just, uh, but I'm comfortable there. I mean, I'm used to being in the background. Violet is not a very egregious person. So she's just just standing around looking at stuff. And if there's somebody who wants to talk to her, it totally can, but she's not pushing herself to say hello to people or, or greet them. She'll just, you know, she's just there, looks at things that interest her like books, for example, or other book related uh, objects. And I think at some point, because she knows you, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Lee, uh, the, the assistant kind of comes up and pops up and uh, is, every, is everything going? Okay. You're all happy here. I know it's good to see you again. This is good. Good. Uh, everything um, going? Did you Lee? want me to drink? Did, were you drinking? Lee, Lee, breathe. Sorry. That is, is very important to breathe. Sorry, okay? sorry. Big night. Big night. It's yeah, the first I know. Time I've got I know. to help out with the, the auction. So you're doing amazingly well this is look at this party everybody is happy everybody is looking at the hors d'oeuvre maybe some of them are wondering what this weird one with the shrimp tail is oh it's a, don't it's tell a, them a, don't tell them keep the mystery keep oh. the mystery that's important oh. always keep a little mystery about your objects and stuff that you serve oh, oh. well you would know about mysteries <laughs> well yeah i am at, i'm at, I'm in the book club that that deals with mystery. So, yeah. And and she goes, yes, that wink, and then she moves away. Yeah. Uh, and I hope Rose, she's a little calmer after that. A little, like she goes from an eleven down to a ten. Okay, it's better than uh, nothing. Rose, what are you up to? Who are you talking to during this this period? Uh, Sabine was just talking to. Pauline Albertine, was that right? Lee. Lee, Lee, the assistant. Lee, the assistant. Oh, Lee, the assistant, right, of course, yes. Uh, I would like to talk to, um, I think, uh, Lily Jacobi and Is find this, out what she's bidding them. This woman, uh, she, you, you like, she strikes you uh, as odd. She's clearly not from Brindlewood. You haven't seen her around. Uh, she's very much a uh, uh, Keeping, keeping to herself. Her her attire is very simple, um, and uh, as you kind of approach, she definitely like 
note your approach. Like she's definitely watching everyone and uh, uh, just curtly nods to you. I stick out my hand. Uh, uh, Rosemary Strand, and you are? Uh, uh, Lily Jacoby. And she holds out her hand and she has one of those handshakes that is like holding a feather where you don't want to squeeze too tight. Rose um, grasps her wrist with her other hand, you know, to make it less pathetic. Uh, <laughs> and like, well, welcome to Brindlewood, uh, Miss Jacoby. Uh, tell me, what are you bidding on tonight? And you see her look around and uh, like her eyes alight on a uh, uh, one of the uh, old brass ashtrays that's in it. Uh, 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 I collect ashtrays. Oh, well, I collect first edition books, and some of those would have been better used as ashtrays. So who's to say who's got the better hobby? Well, uh, so you're not interested in that compass over there? No. Oh, well, I was hoping you could tell me something about it, because that reminds me of something. Oh, well. Uh, no. Where are you from? Boston. Why? We get a lot of people. Tell me, did you know a boy named Edgar? I do understand that Boston is a real big place, so maybe you haven't run into each other, but I thought no harm in asking. No, I, I don't don't know an Edgar. Oh, well. It's probably for the best. Well, uh, I do hope you'll be in Brindlewood Bay for to see the sights. Uh, the Whaling Museum's most interesting. I'm just here for the auction. Oh, well. Good luck, dear. No, pats her on the shoulder. But, uh, uh, and they'll call you to the chairs and, you know, uh, they, they s s seat everybody there, given the, the little clappers with the numbers to uh, show things. And uh, essentially there are a few items done and then a kind of a break and then a few more items then, and this goes on essentially very, very liberally uh, uh, dosing people with alcohol uh, to get them more loosened up to to bid higher, to, to very clearly a, a planned uh, strategy there, and it is definitely uh, Pierre uh, uh, up there doing the auction, and uh, he's like, and now uh, we have uh, the uh, uh, the top from a harpoon from the 19th century, uh, uh, you know, and uh, this is item you know uh, 38. Uh, here, as you can see, it's been cleaned, and so on, but it still shows the wear of the sea. And you know, now uh, this brooch uh, uh, in a mermaid design, uh, uh, provenance unknown, but quite lovely here. We uh, identify uh, some rubies and, and emeralds in it, uh, valued at you know uh, thirteen thousand uh, uh, on base, and it goes on. And again, Bobby, you'll definitely see. It is another one of those pins like you have. Uh, and uh, uh, there is an old red leather bound ship's navigational log. Uh, uh, we, we, it is still sealed, but we've been able to, to date it to the, uh, uh, to the uh, uh, late, late 18th, early 19th century. Um, and certainly that's one of those times, Iris, when you'll see Miller, like card comes up and uh, uh, he will, will definitely bid on that until uh, uh, he gets it for about uh, $1,500. Uh, and then the, the compass comes up, Rose. Uh, and uh, this is a authentic uh, compass, and uh, we have some notes here on the ships that it was on, uh, passed from ship to ship, survived three shipwrecks uh, here in the Brindlewood Bay area, and uh, we'll start the bidding at $3,000. And you will raise your hand, and uh, uh, you'll see this 
sort of mousy woman with the straight bangs, uh, Marjorie Buttons. Um, you know that she comes and hangs around here quite a bit. Uh, um, she'll, you know, she bids 3,200. 3,400. You see her hesitate. 3,600. Four grand. And it will go through and going once, going twice. Uh, sold to Miss Rose. Pierre will will hit the the hammer there, and Ro uh, Rose thinks about how she's going to uh, have to sell the rights to one of Arthur's books. So that's HBO that keeps bothering her. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, and uh, uh, he will will say. Uh, uh, eventually, Pierre will will go. All right. So uh, we've still got a number of uh, items. Uh, we have a, a few things left, but uh, one of the most uh, asked about is the elder wing. Uh, uh, it's a framed moth of unusual uh, appearance. Uh, it uh, looks uh, uh, ordinary. I know in the photographs don't do it justice, but I think when you see it uh, live, well, not live, but you know what I mean. <laughs> when you actually see it in person here, uh, you'll note it has a certain power to it uh, and uh, uh, a great, great value. Um, so I'm going to have uh, Pauline bring that out. Pauline? And he says, oh, hold on a moment. Lee, would you please go and see where Pauline is at? And Lee, stands up and you see her go back and uh, uh, you hear her back there for a bit and uh, he... lean over to Captain Miller in the meantime <laughs> young people these days am I right they can't keep anything organized oh yeah no, can't find her with a, with a flash usually... that's a good point that's a good point uh, and uh, P Pierre starts to go, well, I think we'll, we'll move on to the next object once Lee, and that's when you'll hear the scream. Uh, the shriek comes there and it then kind of into a, uh, a, a racking kind of coughing uh, uh, set of cries from a throat. Um, what do you do, Bobby? Um. I immediately stand up and um, look at Rose and sort of say, you know, kind of gesture with my head and I'm gonna make my way to the back room. She and uh, Bobby and uh, Pierre uh, kind of know, know each other because of the antiques surgery. Mm -hmm. And she sort of gestures to Pierre and makes her way uh, back. He, he rushes back there and you can see they go to the back and the back door out onto the alley is open and uh, he rushes out. You're kind of behind. Uh, Rose, are you holding the crowd? Are you falling behind? Are you looking around? What are you doing? Um, I am making sure I know who everybody who was in this auction room at the time, you know, like I, I think it's everyone who's pictured, including the caterer, the the waiters and waitresses have already been dismissed, maybe maybe forty five minutes ago to kind of save him some money, and he's been doing the last of the serving, um, and it, it's just you, your crew of four plus plus the people there pictured. Um, um, I think the one of the things I would look at from particular is anyone leaving, like immediately, you know, rather than. Uh, Looking, because at the moment everyone else is just confused, right? So if anyone's immediately leaving, that'd be a. No, no, it doesn't look like anybody's getting up to leave here. You know, uh, there, there's almost a determined look on uh, Jacoby's face. She's kind of waiting for the auction to continue. Clearly, mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, what about you, Iris? Um, so you said everyone pictured is Amanda Krause here. Oh, no, no. Uh, uh, anyone below the uh, 
the uh, Kraus Anderson Sanchez line. Um, I don't know, maybe I, uh, like gesture to Violet and, and head towards a, a side exit. Like maybe we can go, go outside the building and check any of the, the non-main exits and see if we see anybody trying to escape or anything. When, when Iris gestures and looks at you, Violet, what are you doing? Oh, I was already moving. She, you I've, kind of, heard, I've heard a shout from, and I think that was Lee, and I want to go and see what she's, yeah. why she's shouting and to help maybe calm her down. Yeah, uh, you look to where Violet's, Violet's right behind Bobby and Pierre. Um, and uh, you can certainly go, go to one of the, the go to the, the only side entrance here and kind of look out. Um, and uh, you don't see anybody running away or anything, Iris. Oh, that would have been really helpful. Yes. Violet, Bobby, uh, uh, you see Pierre kind of runs out. You see Lee is kind of st stepping back and uh, uh, Pierre kind of looks down and he gives a gasp. And you will see next to the small dumpster that they have back here in the alley uh, laid out uh, in the snow is Pauline. Uh, you can see that she's just laid out. She has some uh, uh, scratches on her hands that might be defensive wounds. Uh, and there are uh, certainly uh, uh, markings already starting to form on the neck that suggest strangulation. And uh, Pierre like falls to his knees and is, is grabbing her hand. And Lee is just shaking. Bobby, what do you do? Um, uh, my first instinct, and uh, there's sort of a, a voice in my head that's saying, why are you so worried about this, is I'm looking at Pauline to try and see if I see any tattoos on her. And oh. I'm sort of also mad at myself for getting distracted by it. Uh, let's have you roll the meddling move here. Uh, am I, is my condition cleared or am I still creeped out? Oh, I think he's gone. I think we can clear you creeped out. All right. Um, I'm going to use my composure. And I rolled a nine. Uh, so I think you will definitely not see any kind of tattoo on her. Uh, you know, you're checking that out uh, uh, very quickly. Um, uh, but you will note uh, in the snow, it, the, the little glint catches your eye uh, and you'll see that there is a hypodermic needle there, which seems unusual. Um. I, uh, does it look used? Yeah, it does. Um, I. It's laying enough on the snow that it clearly has to have been here in the last, put here in the last like hour or so. Did you say Jones was here? She is here. Yeah. Um, so I shout back into the, as only Bobby can, back into the uh, building. Um, Nicole, would you come out here, please? And uh, uh, we will, I'm gonna check in with Violet. Violet, what are you doing when you see this tableau? I'll go over to Ali and try to, uh, I don't know, take, she's shaking and I think she's staring at the, at the dead person in the snow. So I'll just try to get, I mean, yeah, I'll get her away from there. Okay, kind of move her away. She just, she looks yeah. shaken, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, she's still kind of doing that that hiccuping, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, trying to catch her breath there. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, she said, "It's is is she is she is she is she dead?" 
I'm afraid so, yeah. I'm afraid so. The so, so sorry you had to see this. I, 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 don't, I, I don't understand. How could I just... Uh, we have to call the police. Somebody will call the police, I'm sure, for that. You were the first one here. I mean, they will ask you what you saw. I, I, I didn't see her back in the back. Uh, I looked around uh, uh, and I, I thought maybe she stepped out to sometimes she smokes when she's nervous. And mm -hmm. so I, 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 I went out and I, I looked and uh, 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 there she was. It's terrible, it's so terrible. I, 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 I just, and, and she kind of then like loses that power of speech. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'll, I'll just look around because we're in the back room, right? Um, is there this elder wing thing? Do I see it? You look around and there's clearly a place where it should be, mm -hmm. like a, a, a space laid out. They've got things organized back here mm -hmm. and you don't see it. Mm -hmm. so I'm asking Lili, just, just one more thing. What? The, the elder wing, did, did you take that? No, no, it, okay. it, it should be that little frame box. Well, it's not here anymore. And uh, uh, Rose, Iris, you hear Bobby calling for the doctor and uh, you'll see uh, Dr. Jones, you know, runs, runs back there. Um, um, Rose goes over, uh, you know, and all of this, the above previous has happened, uh, and then looks down at the snow, pulls out a phone and goes like, did no one think to look at the footprints? My God. <laughs> and tries to do her best to sort of take pictures of all the footprints that could possibly have been, you know. Absolutely. Terrible. Getting a shot of that. Iris, uh, uh, you will see uh, kind of calmly uh, uh, Nigel Porter, uh, see him kind of sigh and uh, he it, takes out his phone and you hear him dial the police. And uh, you'll hear, yes, Sheriff Dalrymple, yes, the, 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 the murder, Antiques. Yeah, I know it's late. Yeah, 30 minutes, no one leaves. And that is where we're going to stop. You have a, a 30 minute window for at least the preliminary investigations before Sheriff Dalrymple gets on the scene. Does that seem fair? Uh, let's go through XP. Uh, so Iris, uh, so we got the, gave you the point for the murder mystery, solving that. Did you share your wisdom with a young person? I kept trying to, but Deputy Anderson was remarkably dense. Well, I think you did share, but whether oh, they yeah. took it is an entirely different <laughs> thing. So there's a point. Um, did you show someone you've still got it? I sort of trying to. I don't know if I quite made it to that, though. Okay. If you, if you don't feel rose to that, then that is fine. Um, Bobby, uh, did you behave like a woman half your age? I am going to say sure. Uh, I feel like her interaction with Hazim, uh, she was acting super confident. Absolutely. In her mind, um, flirting, but not great at it. Did and you did you dote on someone? I think I doted on Iris when she came back from all of her injuries in the previous mystery. I like that. Uh, Rosemary, did you secretly undermine the authority of a local official? I think the way that we framed up that, um, you know, uh, the, the expose, the catching them in the act kind of thing was for maximum, uh, we told you so. Absolutely, absolutely, get a point for that. Did you share a memory of a late family member? Uh, I kept forgetting to. You know what? I think calling out to ask for them to send your husband in that oh. scene is going to count for that. Yeah, that was cool. Good. I'll take that. Violet, did you share your wisdom with a young person? 
Yeah. Yeah, I did. Uh, both with Lee and uh, Priya. Absolutely. Absolutely. Did you show someone that you still got it? I mean, I don't know. Not I kind of think yes, because you, you, without hesitation, ran behind Bobby out yeah. there and were, were like immediately taking charge and moving Lee back mm. in. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I'll I think take that's that worth one. It. Thank you. Um, so I would like to do a, a quick stars and wishes, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. um, kind of got one mystery solved and, and another one uh, set up. Uh, so uh, same order, uh, Bobby slash Dan. Uh, uh, stars, wishes? Uh, I can go first. Uh, Patrick went before me. Oh. Do you care? No, no, uh, I, I, I did that backwards then. I'll go with you and then I'll hit Patrick. All right, sounds good. Um, I, uh, I mean, start a will for doing the work to pull that theory together. That was, that was there were a lot of clues that he'd been pulling together. Um, and um, uh, star to Sabine for jumping back uh, in after missing for a, a few uh, sessions. And I really, Patrick, appreciate Iris. Um, her personality is a little bit of a uh, distinct from the rest of the maidens. And I feel like it sort of creating a nice dynamic among us. So. Uh, wishes, I just took a new maiden move. I took Rick and AJ. So my wish is to next session describe my younger sister. Ooh. Excellent. We'll get that on on stage. We have to get uh, uh, room for Iris to do something physically absurd as well next time. Patrick, stars, wishes. Um, I will. I will second uh, stars to Will for that um, theory and formulation. I it was it was more than I could have pulled together out of the mystery. Uh, and it was a uh, it was a very nice story too, <clears throat> um, and and I'm glad it went well this time. <laughs> <laughs> I saw how the last one went. And that was uh, oh, this was a lot better. Um, stars to Sabine definitely, just because I haven't seen her play with you in forever, and so it's lovely to play with you again. Um, and I really like Violet. Uh, she's uh, the the very like sweet and supportive older lady, but she's also very like self-centered and confident, um, which is, you know, she, it's, it's not like she lets people walk over her, which is nice to see. Um, wishes, uh, I don't know, I'm just, I'm, I'm excited to, to get into this new one. Uh, I definitely would like to see more into the the like uh cult and occult side of things um just because the the last mystery had some hintings around but they were more towards like bobby and rose's past experiences um so i'd like to get something really weird and and unsettling on the table i think i can supply that all right what what murdering an NPC there in the interlude wasn't wasn't enough. <laughs> that was nice. I did like Absalom going. Um, I do want to second what you said about uh, uh, Violet slash Sabine's moment there. I thought the going down with the Irish coffee. I thought that was a really nice. That that whole sequence was felt really real, uh, and I, I quite like that. Will stars wishes. Um, I, I love the whole tea room squabble kind of introduction between the two characters and then the sort of like, Iris, how could you death? We told you about Violet all the time and then like back and forth. And then the whole split on like the caves and the conspiracy and how much Iris is like 100% into it with nothing to go off and Violet is way more sensible. But then Iris also has like their own conspiracy theories <laughs> and not entirely relevant. So maybe that support is not actually the best indicator in the world. Uh, and I thought all that was was just great. Um, 
we could probably just role play these characters and I would enjoy the whole session, you know, <laughs> like not actually do a mystery, just bicker. <laughs> um, and Lowell, uh, Lara Sanchez continues to be uh, a thorn in my side. Uh, and the whole conspiracy thing is shaping up lovely. I'm looking forward to more of it. I promise that Lara Sanchez will make an appearance next yes. time. Yes, I'm sure. Uh, wishes. Um, well, I mean, what I'm discussed about the occult move, we need to come up with. I, I, you know, I'm looking at the occult move now, I realize that it's create a move, right? Create a custom move using the occult yeah. move, right? Which I hadn't quite understood before. Um, so we could all use the whale bone in different ways to come up with different custom occult moves, exactly. right? Exactly. Um, but could one thing I would. The darkness. Yes. <laughs> one thing I would love to do is to try and like clear suspects from the conspiracy level of stuff. You know, like we kind of have done with Burko. Uh, by establishing that she's involved with the conspiracy, but not necessarily like part of it, do you know? Because mm -hmm. she gave us more information. So, like, you know, clearing the name, if we clear people, we'll have a who the, you know, we will eliminate suspects kind of thing as we go through. Because uh, otherwise, I can just see us having like 300 supporting NPCs and not just yes. in anybody in Brindlewood. <laughs> that seems fair. That seems fair. Uh, and, uh, uh, Violet. Yeah, stars to everybody. It was really lovely being back with these ladies and meeting Iris for the first time. Um, Patrick, I immensely enjoy playing with you, even though we rarely managed to do that, but I'm happy uh, when I saw that you were on the play on, on the roster, I was like, yay, Patrick, hooray. Um, also, I like your blue, blue beard. That is uh, amazing. Thank you. Um, and I, I kind of liked uh, <laughs> like the way Iris and Bobby were like, no, we were telling her about you. <laughs> and why were, are you so rude? That was, that was really lovely. Um, yeah, I also like Iris, uh, Iris uh, Roses. Roses. Uh, yeah, we have this theory. There is this happening, and um, okay, yeah, sure. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I really enjoyed uh, being back in Brindlewood Bay, even though I won't be here next week because uh, yeah, well, that was when my Miami Files was going to happen. So, but I'll be back the week after that. Okay. Which is the culmination, I think, of this thing and where we will maybe find more murderers. Potentially more murderers, which is which is nice. So <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll just pretend Violet is up with Lee and uh, taking care of her and talking. Absolutely. Her I think I think we'll make that sort of the, the crux of where where she's at uh, yeah. is taking care of her. Uh, anything else wishes wise? Ah, oh, yeah, I, I wish I was there for uh, to see how this goes, but uh, I'm not, so I will look forward to this. And yeah, I, I want to see more about this this deep reaver or whatever it was called, and uh, maybe maybe that's what uh, what Violet is doing when Lee is safe. That just uh, looking around for for more information on that shit. Yeah, uh, what I'll do is we'll, we'll do a, like a love letter for you for that next session based on that. Cool. Yeah, I'd, I'd love that. Excellent. All right. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, I am going to stop the recording.